All right, we're going to do a uh, walk around video on this Atasca 38R Soleil. It's 2016. Starting up here in the front under the hood. We have our generator, we have our windshield washer, solvent. The yellow is your dipstick. The light blue or gray is your antifreeze. There is a circuit breaker right down there. Oh, you can see it has to be on. Start, stop, switch, and an hour meter. On all one hand generators, stop is also prime. So if I press the stop switch for about 20 seconds, the light will come on. We're running the fuel pump and it primes the generator. Start is also preheat, so when I hit start, it will not crank until the engine preheats. So you hold start continuously to start the generator. And as soon as it's ready to start, it will. Hood prop. Put the hood away. Take the hood prop down. I will apologize for some of the weird video angles, but I'm doing this with a tablet one handed. As you can see, the door awning's out, porch lights on, the awning lights are on, awning's out. It's an electric awning, both of them. The switches are inside the door. We'll get to those when we go inside. We have a storage compartment, and it does have pass through to the other side. More storage, and again, full pass through. Outside TV. Unlock it here. One nice thing that Winnebago and Atasca do is most everything uses the same key. So out here we have a LG TV. Another storage compartment, again, full pass-through, so you get lots of storage. This next compartment has your water tank and your water pump. So there's a light in here. Water tank drain, pump drain. All nicely set up. Back here, another storage area has your inverter and your has your battery disconnect. All the cargo lights are on a cargo light switch inside as well. These are your house batteries. There is room for more if you wanted to add more batteries at some point. Rear engine compartment. Has struts to hold it up. Transmission or engine dipstick yellow. Transmission dipstick right above it. Power steering reservoir. Your antifreeze reservoir. There's a diagnostic port. Your engine oil fill. Air filter restriction gauge.
pretty simple setup. Down here, two inch receiver, seven way trailer connector, all pretty, pretty standard. Third brake light up there is your backup camera and your marker lights, tail lights, exhaust. Back here on the driver's side, we have a fuse compartment for the chassis. We have our chassis batteries. We have a push button reset breaker box. Above this, we have our water heater. Does not have a hinge, it has pins, so tip it out, lift it off. Anode plug and drain. Under the black cover is your 110 heating element. And the electric switch here is for electric hot water. Keep that off unless you know there's water in it and you're using it. Your gas valve. Your T-stats are under here. Uh, under those buttons, if they overheat or trip, they will pop out. You push them back in to release them, reset them. And then your T and P valve or boiler valve or pressure valve. It's got a lot of different names. Technical name is TNP, temperature and pressure valve. Pause for above the water heater is our dryer vent. Our DEF tank is right here. Our power cord storage is here. And our transfer switch is here. These transfer switches do have some surge protection. However, it is single event. So if it takes a major surge, it will die in the process and you'll have to replace the transfer switch. So we do suggest you consider purchasing a quality inline surge protector. Go in there in front of it. Down here we have our gray and black valves and our sewer hose hookup in between them. Whole house water filter with a water filter wrench. Your outside shower. Your Santa plush. Your Santa plush goes straight to the black tank and then your water hookup goes straight to your water system and this valve here if you turn the valve it puts it in tank fill so you can fill the tank it should be in the normal position for everyday use and fill the fill you have portholes down there on the bottom so you can run your hoses in and out and there is a light switch here as well Coming forward, we're on the other side of the storage compartment is your starter kit. Starter kit's got a sewer hose, drinking water hose, toilet chemical, toilet paper, 110 adapter, and a water pressure regulator. And there are more lights up in this side as well. We have our furnace. This is the combustion air intake and exhaust. Do you suggest you put a screen over it in the summer so that the bugs don't turn your furnace into a condominium and plug it all up? Now the storage area uh, with a light. And again, it's full pass-through storage above and below the frame rails. That boxed out section is where your frame rails are. Up here we have another small storage area. Pass through above, and down below is our LP tank. The LP tank has a gauge with electric lead, so you can check it inside. Your fill valve is right there. Your fixed liquid level gauge or vent is right there. And your vapor valve that you turn on and off is there. Regulator is under the cover. Always turn the valve all the way on or all the way off, not in between. This little door here is the back side of your refrigerator. Gives you access to your water valve for winterization. So you can winterize your ice maker so that you don't freeze your refrigerator up. Down here is your fuel fill. There's one on each side. And then in here we have fuse box and push button reset breakers and a little bit of storage area and your generator exhaust is right there. Mm -hmm. 
Your mirrors have turn signal cameras on each one. And we're going to go in. Okay, inside here, top row, coach lights, compartment lights. This switch here turns those lights on in all your compartments. Awning power must be on for the awnings to work. Patio, in and out, that's your big awning. Press the button and it rolls up. Door awning, same thing. Press the button and it rolls up. If you let go of the button, it stops. So you can put it in or out any amount you want. Next row of switches down are your awning lights, your porch lights, and your jacks. You can actually store your jacks from here. Chassis battery on and off. Coach battery on and off. Step on and off. In one position, the step goes in and out every time the door opens. In the other position, it stays out. <coughs> Up on top of the passenger seat is your step cover. In and out. Passenger seat has this little handy table set up. I don't know how well you can see what I'm doing here, but it pulls out. Step down a little bit. And then the table swings all the way up and over. And then you can slide it back in. To put it away, pull it out, tilt it up, swing it down, push it back in. Seat controls there. To adjust the backrest, I believe, and, or, well, no, the footrest and the swivel. Sorry. Six-way power seat. A little bit of storage area up here. Storage area up here with your antennas. The switch labeled wine guard is for your satellite antenna. The switch with the little green LED here. Is your TV antenna. Now we're on cable. Now we're on antenna. 110 outlet up here as well. Same basic thing. Storage here on the driver's side. And a little storage rack above the driver. So what we're going to do now is put the slide outs out. And Go through the rest of this. Okay, got the slide outs out. I'll show you the controls here in a little bit. Here is your TV antenna. It does not crank up or down. There is a little signal meter here you can turn on or off. And an attenuator allows you to turn that down a little bit. And then you can rotate the antenna for better signal. Okay. Your booth dinette makes it into a bed. Okay, a little interruption there. Uh, anyhow, to make this into a bed, you remove the back, back cushion inserts and tilt the bottom cushions up. And then underneath here is a lever. Swing that lever. And then this entire tabletop pushes straight down. Flip the cushions back. And then the two insert cushions that you removed... Go in the center. And that makes that into a bed. Couch also makes it into a bed. I believe this is a jackknife. Let me see. Oh, no, this is a tripod. So for this one, what we're going to do, hang on a second. Okay, you lift up the bottom section and pull it out. And then this top here flips over. And voila, it's a bed. <clears throat> to put it back away, 
We flip the back back. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. We'll see. We pick up here and we let it fold back up, tuck it back down, and there you go. It's back in couch mode. Okay. Bunk beds. Top bunk is a bunk. Not a lot of clearance there. And the bottom bunk is a little dinette or a bed. If you remove the tabletop, slide it in on these brackets and put the bolsters down, it makes a bed. In the main bedroom, we have light switches. Big closet. Additional storage and stuff in there. Drawers all the way across the bottom. And we go back into the bathroom. Bathroom. We have a shower. Again, this coach has not been detailed yet. We're just finishing the prep. So they wanted to get the video out as fast as we can. Our toilet. The instructions are on the lid. That's the only way to say it, but that's it. It is a push button controller. Big flush, little flush. Press both buttons, it'll drain the bowl. The screen, window shades are just pulled down. Emergency exit window. You pull the screen out, flip the handles up, push the window out. Above here, we have a storage area with our hookups for our washing machine. Down here is our washing machine. It's a Whirlpool. Did not do laundry in it. It has been ran to make sure it works. We have drawers here on both sides. Water pump switch here. Drawers down here. Over here is our dryer, big medicine cabinet, a little storage area above the dryer, extra towel handle or whatever. And this is your dryer. Okay, that piece across the top is not supposed to be blue. That is a little blue film that they put on there to store it so whoever originally purchased this never removed it up here air conditioner if these vents are open it's direct blow if they're closed it blows through the heat ducts again my shower light switches a little towel hook coat hook whatever robe your bed has controllers on each side. You have outlets on each side. You have a light on each side. A light switch on each side for the lights. Storage above, all the way across. Pull down shades. And here we have a day shade and a night shade on both sides. You have a flip down TV. Got a little storage pocket up here for plug-ins. On this side is a direct TV satellite receiver. And again, the TV flips down. You put it back up. You flip it up. This little lever here. You pull on it to release it. Very simple. I do suggest taking this pillows and bed sheets and stuff and saving it for when you sell it or trade it because they add value. There is storage under the bed. A little bit. This is primary. Sorry about that. This is primarily mechanical section. Usually when they let the bed lift up, there's usable storage under it. 
Alright, let me get myself in a better position here. Alright. These are our 12 volt circuit breakers. They're push button resets, no fuses. Over here is our 110 breakers. We have our main section, and then we have our inverter section. The inverter section is stuff that's ran off the inverter, and the main section is everything from the generator and all the other power. Okay, standing back up. We come up here. We're going to start at the top. There's our slide-out switches. Now, the slide-outs require that the engine be running and the parking brake be set. Down here, engine preheat and electric water heater off and on. There is a switch on the water heater. This turns on the outlet to it. An RV Comfort is our control for our heating and cooling. This is for the living room. There's another one on the wall there by the bathroom for the bathroom. This one has fan mode, auto or on. We have off, cool, gas heat, and electric heat, and high and low fan speed, and our temperature set is right here. On this one in the bedroom, that's for the rear half, it only has cooling. So it does not have a heat control here. This one is air conditioning only. Again, auto on and off for the fan, cool or off for the T-stat, and fan speed low and high. So all your heat is controlled by this one. Down here is your water heater. That's for your gas. Your electric again is up here. Pilot out is going to be on till it till the water heater lights. Level test. Hold the button. You can see gray water and black water are empty. Fresh is full. LP is full, and battery is full and charging. Water pump switch here as well, and our power line. Our power line monitors what we have for power. And it tells you what the status of all of it is. Now, when you are plugged in with a power adapter and go down to 30 amp or 15 amp, this system will shut stuff off on its own to keep you from overloading the circuit. Below here is our EC30, our auto gen system. We have start and stop here, same as outside. Stop is also prime. So when we hold it for a few seconds, it comes on, we're priming the generator. Start is also preheat, so it won't crank until it's ready. Now we have an auto gen switch. We hit auto, and it says enter for auto. You hit enter, and you're in auto gen start. If I press it again, I turn quiet time on. Very simple. All right, so some things that have to be done. Number one, you have to make sure the clock is right. So we hit the set button, and we set our time. And I don't know exactly what time it is. But I know it's probably around 11, 11.30. Pause a second here. 